The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast. This is your special guest host, John Fitty Falcone, and today I have a really great guest in Coach Sean Dodd. Before we jump into Coach Dodd's story and his amazing journey through the coaching profession, make sure you check out all of our sponsors on our pre-read role and our post-read role. Also, check out the newest sponsor we're going to talk about right now, and that's Sweet Hand Sports, and that's brought to you by my ex-college teammate, from Bethany College, where we played football together, Matt Lando Landowski. Lando has established this company as the premier batting glove company in all of Western Pennsylvania. Neil Walker, the Pittsburgh Pirates, great. The Pittsburgh prodigy son even wear these gloves. So check out Sweet Hand Sports today, brought to you by one of the toughest football players I ever played with, Matt Lando Landowski. With that being said, we have a great guest coming to us today from Northeast Ohio. He is the head coach at North High School in Eastlake, Sean J- Sean Dodd. Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, absolutely. Happy to happy to have you here. So first thing is, I know we've had on a couple of, uh, of your coaching buddies on this show previously in Nick Tomba and Jason Bickle. So how do you know Nick and Jason? Oh, boy. Uh, so Nick is, uh, I'm, an, I'm an Eastlake North alum. Uh, Nick is also an alum. He's a, a lot younger than I am. Uh, so we knew each other when I was coaching at some different places prior to coming to North. He was coaching at North, um, and he and I actually teach together now at Willoughby Middle. So we're both uh, ELA teachers there. He has eighth grade. I have seventh grade. Uh, he's now coaching at Willoughby South, which is our rival. Um, but, uh, you know, a unique situation where we have two high schools. So we teach together, um, see each other. We actually uh, flip classrooms uh, one period. He leaves, I enter it. Um, so it's kind of neat. We get a chance to talk some ball a little bit. And then Bick, Bick has been on our staff um, for the nine years uh, since I've been at North. He left for a little bit to go coach with his brother. Um, and then uh, he had a stop at Willoughby South with Tamba. Uh, and then uh, back with us the last couple of years. And now he's serving as our defensive coordinator. So uh, I've known both both guys for over a decade now. So good dudes. Yeah, definitely good dudes. They've been on the show here, you know, quite a bit. Um Nick's been on as an individual guest. Jason's been on an individual guest. They've they've been on for our uh, roundtables that we have from sports and small business and holidays. So they're great contributors to the show. They're they're great supporters of the show. And uh, make sure everybody you know checks them out too in their professions and their uh, social media and things like that. So. With that being said, you kind of brought this up. You are an Eastlake graduate. Um, So kind of tell us about growing up in Eastlake. Um, You know, you're very close to Willoughby, but tell us about what growing up in Eastlake was like, um, you know, in your high school experience. Yeah, so it's either a really cool story or a really lame story. Uh, That's kind of how I tell it to everybody. It's uh, I've lived here my entire life. Um, So for 51 years, I've never moved away uh, from this area, this community. Um, Been here forever. Uh, Met my wife in high school. 
um, at North Sheen alum. All three of my kids have graduated from North. Um, you know, it was a great community to grow up in, uh, you know, in the 70s and 80s when I was a little kid playing East Lake youth baseball and East Lake Little League and then uh, Willowick Middle, where I got a chance to teach for a little bit. Um, and then uh, over there at uh, in uh, Lancer Land. And then, uh, you know, being at North now, coaching, uh, going on year 10, uh, being an alum, I played there for Coach Dan Kakura. Um, so being an opportunity to come back home, uh, coach where I played and grew up and all my high school buddies come to the games and they support and we have our fundraiser this Saturday. So all my, my buddies and teammates will be there. And now players that played for me and my son's on the coaching staff now, which is a neat thing. Um, so it's a really cool experience and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of it. And, um, it's, it's been a neat thing. I'm, I'm very honored to, to be able to be back there. Awesome. There's not a lot of people that say they can be a, a coach at their alma mater, you know, and, and have the success also that that you've had there. Um, I kind of re- rewind on this, though. So, you know, you graduate from East Lake, you know, just a couple years ago as a high school student and you move on to college and, you know, you became a teacher. But where did you ultimately um, go to school at? And, um, you know, get, what did you exactly get your education degree in? Yeah. So um, right out of uh, when I was in high school, uh, I, I had the 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 goal in mind to to teach and coach and I actually just wanted to be um, a middle school guy because I knew I wanted to have kids and uh, you know have a family and I wanted to be around and the time commitment and that sort of thing and then I started off um, in college I went to Cleveland State um, originally committed to Gannon um, University uh, in, in PA there um, had some injuries and setbacks decided not to go ended up playing in Europe a little bit uh, down the road but the the teaching thing. Um, started in high school. I got an opportunity to go uh, kind of leave our class and go work with the elementary schools and um, that sort of thing when I was in high school. And I really kind of got the bug and talking to my coaches in high school, uh, they were kind of encouraging me to teach and coach. Um, so it just kind of took off from there. And then when I was in college, I was a, a secondary degree major and my guidance counselor pulled me aside and said, listen, if you go for elementary, being a male and a jock, like you're going to get hired right away. And um, I did my student teaching in Euclid. My second week of student teaching, they offered me a teaching position. So I never wow. even had to interview for that. Um, and then Mike Rizzola, um offered me a position to coach the freshmen. I wanted to do middle school, uh, but didn't have anything open. And then once I got at that level, like I kind of got the bug and it just kind of took off from there. So teaching and coaching is something I've always wanted to do. Um, pretty fortunate. I'm not a guy that you know, he had to take a while to find his way. Couldn't figure out what he wanted to do. I always kind of knew what I wanted to do. Um, I was fortunate to have a, a family that supported it and because it's a huge time commitment. Um, but I've been fortunate to be able to do this for, for 26 years now. And um, I wouldn't change it for anything. That's definitely awesome. So I know we were talking a little bit in the pre-roll and, you know, now I work in, in higher ed, but I'm a, actually a former high school assistant coach and, and head coach in track and football. And I coached football at the college level, couple previous stops ago. So I do get about, you know, you catch the bug for it. Uh, you want to get into it. You want to, you want to keep going with it. And yeah, you have to have your family behind you and, and that you can definitely attest to that with what you just said. And I wasn't married at the time or anything like that, but you know, and my parents, my sibling or my sister there as my sibling, you know, it's evident probably with your children, your wife and, you know, your family too, because you got to have them behind you. Cause if your family's not behind you and coaching, that's a tough road to go because you yeah. suffer both at home and on the field. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You have to have that support system. I've seen guys that they either had to get out of, um, you know, coaching for the, for the family stuff or they broke up with girlfriends or whatever, because of the time commitment. It, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. So you have to have that, that base, that foundation that that's going to support it. And um, I've been very, very blessed and very fortunate that it's never been an issue. Um, it, it's funny, you know, I've been doing this for, X 26 years now. And I've had some people ask, you know, when are you going to give it up? And, you know, my wife would be the first one to tell you like, oh, he, he's not done yet. He can't come home. Like he's got to <laughs> keep him over there at the field. He's, he's nowhere near it yet. Um, so sure. I still have the energy, still have the juice, still love it. So um, God willing health wise. And, you know, they still want me around. Uh, I'll be doing this for a while. still. I hope. Yeah. And I think, you know, you get a test to this. We're going to get into this a little bit more later on in the show, but I think when you're a coach, right. And you're a teacher, especially when you coach two sports, like I've done and, and you, you do now there's, there is a health element that goes into this, right? You, of course you have to have the support behind you at home, but you have to make sure for the longevity. And I only did it for 12 years, not, you know, 25 like yourself, but you have to make sure you're eating right. You're training, right. You're getting enough sleep. You are doing things that you enjoy outside of that because 
for the longevity of it to keep yourself healthy and not get out of shape or get burned out, I think you can probably attest to to all those different things. I mean, there is a lot of like behind the scene things personally people have to do for the longevity of coaching for health reasons. Yeah. Yeah. I think mentally and physically, um, I tell my guys all the time, I'll reach out to my staff, you know, starting now, cause now we start early and earlier. We actually have our first practice, uh, Thursday. So we have, we have okay. camp already coming up uh, with the way Ohio changed uh, some of the, the, the rules and contact periods and that. But, um, you know, early on in my career, I was a guy that would be up till one, two in the morning looking at film and falling asleep with the, the computer on my lap. And my wife would have to like put me to bed or close the computer for me. And I would wake up on the couch and um, they would kind of sit with me a little bit on the weekends and room weekends after a loss. And I, I didn't balance maybe part of that as well as I should have when I was a little bit younger. Now I'm a little bit older. I can balance it a little bit. I make sure I get to bed early and make sure I get my seven, eight hours. And, um, you know, there's plenty of time to watch film later. And sometimes you can do too much of that. Um, so I try to tell younger guys to balance all of that, but I will tell my staff, Hey man, you guys got to start getting in two a day shape. Um, you know, you got to start walking, running, getting on the treadmill, start getting ready to be out there in the heat, especially as the guys get a little bit older. Um, our staff is pretty balanced right now. We've got, we have some older guys, 50s, 60s. We have some 20 something year olds and some guys in their thirties. Um, but being able to balance all of that and staying healthy, eating properly, I do think that that's important in the role that we're in because you have to be energetic. Um, it is long hours, even at the high school level. And if you're going to coach multiple things or some guys coach three sports, especially these young guys, and you have to have some, some activities outside of football. You know, you have your family stuff and all that. Um, you know, I, I like to work out. I don't golf or anything like that. But some guys golf. You know, we have a boat. So we do some boating and things like that. But you have to have other interests also. It can't just all be the sport that you're coaching. I think that's when guys get burnt out. We'll be back after a quick break. Big labia energy. What if I eat a little cheese every day? <laughs> Just it's, keep it. It's on like the I road. have a tolerance. Yeah, for cheese. Good Same job with cats. Up your tolerance. Like if I pet a cat every day for the first week or two. I thought you were going to say if I eat a cat a little bit every day. <laughs> Starting at the tail I mean, and just ate a little bit. Then I'd be fine. But if I didn't eat a cat for three months. I would totally start at the face. Why yeah. would you start at the tail? If someone put a gun to my head and said, eat this cat. I'm trying to think of we're an acceptable talking about scenario. A feline. Right? <laughs> oh, did you think I was talking about pussy? Maybe. It could go there. I don't want to eat a cat. I want to eat a pussy. <laughs> I agree with you on that. You know, I I've worked out over the years, um, but really my release when I was coaching is I, I love working on my car, not like fixing the engine and stuff like washing, waxing, <laughs> cleaning yeah. out my car. And I, and I love reading. So when I was coaching, I was doing a lot of that to do like that mental stimulation, that, that ability to get away, um, you know, from the game, but it, it is a hard thing to do because you want to grind so hard when you're young you yes. know, with it, but you can, you know, burn yourself out um, easily. So, yeah, same what you were saying about the working out, getting on the treadmill, doing all those things. Got to get yourself, you know, right for the season. I It is funny, though. You're talking about family support and working out and all that. So I'm a big New York Knicks fan. Are you a basketball fan at all? Not a huge Cavs fan, but not like a okay. huge, huge guy. Okay. So Tom Thibodeau, who is the Knicks head coach, former coach of the Bulls, Former coach of the Timberwolves, he's 66 years old. I read a a very interesting article on him when he was 24. I think he was engaged and he was an assistant basketball coach at Salem State Division three school. He broke his engagement off and he sent with his athletic director and the athletic director said, why did you break your engagement off? He said, because I can't be a great basketball coach and be married at the same time. He goes, I can't devote to both. And now I think that guy's like the exception of the rule that he's been a bachelor his whole life, singles, whole life, coach basketball, 43 years. And all he does, they say, is just get there at five in the morning and like leave at midnight. So for that guy, I give him credit on that because that's a rare thing to find without making yourself sick or getting burnt out of, uh, of, of coaching. And I think Bill Belichick was a little bit that way as well. Um, a little exception, exception to the rules. So, so coach, we kind of talked about, you know, your, your, a little bit of your experience um, over, over your realm coaching. So you get the freshman job at Euclid when you're a a young guy coming out. Um, And then can you kind of walk us now from that time at Euclid 
to when you became the head coach at East Lake North and all your stops in between? Yeah. Yeah. So um, at Euclid, I was fortunate enough to, uh, I was freshman coach for three years and I was able to move up through the varsity um, for another six. So I had nine years at Euclid high school um, with uh, Mike Rizzola as the head coach and then Tommy Gibbons and the whole Gibbons family, uh, Rick Lytle and a lot of these guys are coaching at Lake Catholic now uh, over in Mentor. And then after that, I got an opportunity to go to uh, NDCL um, out in Chardon with uh, Byron Morgan, who's a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, he had come out of retirement to take the job and was looking for some guys and um, was fortunate to, to go there. And um, when I was talking to him, I was like, you know, at some point I would like to be a head coach. And as a guy, well, I'll throw a ton of responsibility on you. So it was a really good opportunity for me to learn the weight room, uh, the warm-up stuff, a lot of the behind-the-scenes things that you don't typically get just as an assistant. So I was grateful for Byron to let me do all that stuff and coordinating and, um, you know, learning the ropes and all of that. Um, and then from there, I was uh, fortunate enough to get the head coaching job at uh, Gilmore Academy um, in Gates Mill. So uh, after four years of NDCL, uh, four years at Gilmore and uh, what a great experience that was. I uh, came in, I think it was like 20-some guys on the roster, 9 through 12. It's a small private school. And uh, they had gone, I believe it was like 1-9, and 1-9 nine, one and nine, uh, in the previous two years. Um, knew we had a, a big uphill battle there. And uh, by the time we left, uh, we had finished uh, year three with um, the, the best offensive statistically year uh, in school history. Uh, got to 8-2. and two. Uh, the next year, we were supposed to have a down year. We finished eight and two again, um, some back-to-back playoff appearances, uh, a playoff victory. And then going into that year five, we kind of had it where we wanted. We were pre-ranked six in the state. And, uh, you know, we, we were really proud of where we were able to take them from to where they were, uh, 55 guys now in the program. And then uh, East Lake North calls. And, uh, boy, was that a tough decision. Um, I think I probably would have said no just about every other school in the state. Um, and actually, uh, ironically, Matt Duffy, who's the head coach at Willoughby South, um, good friend of mine, he's the one who called and said, hey, listen, uh, you know, you're on the short list and probably yours if you want it. So I talked to some uh, some veteran coaches, Nick Restifo from St. Ignatius, John Story from St. Joe's and um, Rush Jakes from Strongsville, some some guys that have been around a long time. And they all told me retirement wise, definitely take the North job uh, because it pays into STRS. And they said in the long run. You're going to thank us when, when you're at the end of your career, uh, retirement wise. And, uh, you know, an opportunity to come back home and, uh, you know, teach where I was teaching coach where I'm living. Uh, my kids were in the district already, even though they're a younger school. My, my middle son was at uh, Gilmore with me. We gave him the option and he decided to come over to North with us, um, which was pretty cool uh, because he was a freshman. And uh, by the time he was a senior, his senior at North, we were able to make the playoffs for the first time in school history. Um, you know, and, father son being able to do that together uh, was a pretty neat thing and now he's on my staff so so now I've been at north for uh the the be going on year 10 now coming up gotcha. so let me ask you this question I'm always curious when I talk to multiple time head coaches so when you got that job at Gilmore Academy compared to when you got the job at East Lake did you feel like almost a flip in your personality and a difference like when you first got that Gilmore job did you try to kind of do everything run the offense defense special teams kind of hover over all your coaches but as then you got a little bit older and got the second go around you kind of let the assistance coach and take that step back um not really I'm, I'm a very type a and kind of a control guy and I've learned just recently probably in the last uh, maybe eight years probably your four so three four five somewhere at, at north uh, when i was at gilmore i was that way when i got to north when i started i was that way um and then as i got a little bit older and stuff i've been able to back off and and it, it's not a trust thing um it's just 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 kind of how I, I work um and fortunately my staff uh they all came with me from gilmore to north uh they all know how i operate and they, they can kind of laugh at me and they know when they kind of just tell me off and tell me to back off and um, you know, they get it. They don't take it personal and they don't get butt hurt or anything. Um, but I, I've just kind of learned over the years. But definitely from Gilmore to North, I was kind of the same guy uh, starting off at both places. About halfway through the, this this time at North is when I kind of started backing off a little bit. Gotcha. When I was a uh, head coach for the two seasons I did at the high school level, that first year I really – and I guess it was just being a young guy. Like I was 29 turning 30 and, you know, I was really like – I want it this way and da 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 and try to control everything. Yeah. And by year two, when I realized I couldn't do that because I was literally like running myself in the ground, 
you know, I take a step back and let the assistance coach, I, I move out of being a position coach and I handle more, more of the game day stuff and, you know, one side of the ball coordinating. So um, I it's do hard. get to like, it, it's, it's tough though to let, like, let go. It is. It, it is. Yeah. Um, and, and I learned that from guys I coached under and I coached under my time in high school, you know, th- three really good um, or sorry, two really good coaches. And my college coach, I coached under too. They, they always said, when you go in, it's really hard though, to let go because you want to control everything. And the growth of a coach is, you know, like kind of like what you said, right. Kind of taking a step back and letting yeah. guys do stuff, but yeah, you can't take it personal when someone, someone starts ripping on you. Um, yeah. You know, that's your boss. <laughs> so, well. um, so I, one thing I want to, I want to talk about is the, is the interesting dynamic of the Willoughby East Lake school district and mm-hmm. the towns being right here and how that works. And I don't think people maybe outside of Lake County quite know how that works. So being a teacher, you know, at, at uh, Willoughby uh, middle school and being a coach at East Lake, but, but really having that Willoughby East Lake school district together, can you kind of talk about that for all the listeners? Yeah. So we have two high schools um, with, I don't know how many districts have that uh, it, without the state, within the state of Ohio, um, but we have Willoughby, uh, South High School, and we have East Lake North High School. And then from those high schools, we have three middle schools. We have East Lake Middle, Willowick Middle, which predominantly feed into North. And then we have Willoughby Middle, which feeds into South. And I teach at Willoughby Middle, which feeds into our, our rival school. Um, so, and then uh, the different elementary schools that feed directly into either Willowick or East Lake or Willoughby. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of how the, the setup was. Um, I started off at Willoughby Middle, and then I was able to bid into Willowick Middle, which would be like a North school. Um, and then we had some cuts and stuff, and I got bumped back to, to Willoughby Middle, where I've been the last four years. Um, and I had an opportunity this year with some changes to uh, potentially get out, but I, I'm pretty comfortable and pretty happy where I'm at right now with my role at Willoughby. Um, so it really it, – it, it isn't much different from like when I was at Gilmore, I was still – teaching in Euclid when I was the head coach mm-hmm. at Gilmore. So I'm used to that dynamic of not being in the building. Um, at first it really bothered me being like in South territory. Um, you know, cause you want, as a teacher, I want my kids to have pride in their school um, to be excited about South. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess with that at all. I think that's selfish of me to do that. So promoted all that will be stuff, but, you know, seeing your rivals colors all over the place and um, everybody's supporting them and, booing you and you know they want you to lose and do terrible but now that i've been there for so long uh the kids really embrace it uh so they get excited every week they want to hey how'd you guys do you know can't wait to play and then that week is a big week and it's you know we stink again and uh south is the greatest and you know i want them to have that i want them to have that high school experience and that school pride so it's uh it's a unique situation um, but when South is away, my students will come to a North game, uh, which is pretty neat. You know, they're wearing their South stuff, but it's a lot easier for them to get to our place than uh, another community that's a little bit further away if they don't have rides because they're middle school kids. Sure. Uh, so, and then Matt Duffy, the, the head coach over there in Tomba, like you mentioned, they're, he's their defense coordinator. Those guys are friends of mine. Like we talk all the time. And um, you know, I hope those guys go nine and one and just lose to us every year. You know, it, it's so funny that you, you say that too, and like they're being their friends and, you know, not being from here originally, but being here now, I guess you, people don't realize if you're not in Lake County, the the game of games, the North South game and, and what that entails. Um, that I've been around enough and, and with my job know enough now that it's like uh, it's like the Ohio State Michigan game of Lake County, Ohio, the, the North North South game. I think, you know, people are crossing out the first letter and they're not saying the name. Um, you know, can you kind of talk about the excitement, though, on the rivalry and and the, uh, the I guess the um, history of, of the North South game? Yeah. So history wise, um, as a player, we had a run um, like we never lost the South when I was playing. And it kind of goes in. If you look at the history, it kind of goes in chunks like somebody will win like six years in a row or 10 years in a row or or whatever it is. And South had our number when I came in. Um, I kind of inherited a losing streak and continued it for a little bit uh, myself. Uh, and then we were able to get them and then we got them again this year. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, it's sold out. The place is insane. 
Duff and I really try to keep it to where, you know, hey, guys, we don't want not, not just the football guys been in the stands. Like we'll tell the kids on both sides, community wise, like, guys, let's let's have a friendly rivalry. Like we don't like them that day. They don't like us. We both want to win and we want the bragging rights and want to be excited and celebrate. But we don't want it, the fights behind bleachers and, you know, cops being called for different things. Um you know, there's the different pranks the kids will do and, and that sort of thing. But for the most part, it, it goes pretty smooth. Um, I'm sure there's some some issues like any high school rivalry that, that might go on. You know, as a coach, I don't ever see any of that kind of stuff. I just can tell you it's packed. I mean, there are probably three, 5,000 people, whatever the, the sellout crowd is. But it is uh, the mayor's coming. The mayor's all bet. And uh, local businesses around here, uh, you know, the loser will wear the opponent's jersey uh, to serve at a restaurant or or what have you. Um, so it, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. I'll, I'll get calls and messages from the mayors and he's like, and we'll look like coach, we're going to win this year. Cause we've got a bet and we want to know going into the season, you know, how confident are you? So, you know, it's a pretty unique thing. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely awesome. And if anybody's just a fan and you want to check out the North South game, definitely come up. Um, even if you don't know much about Lake County, uh, Willoughby and East Lake have a lot of places to eat, a lot of places to get gas. You can go hang out, have a good time. Um, and kind of have your have your pick of whoever you want to cheer for that yep. night, whether it's uh, whether it's north or south. So, um, coach, one thing I, I kind of want to talk about, you know, now with you is um, I want to talk about like the, the the division that you're in or people want to say the conference that you're in. I know that's changed a little bit um, over time. So can you kind of talk about who you actually play year in and year out with your um, conference or, you know, region, however you want to say it, uh, people talk about a little bit different than your non-league games. And how do you actually schedule your non-league games? Yeah. So I'll start with the non-league. Um, we, I, I have uh, the freedom to kind of work on that and navigate that myself. I've um, been doing this for so long. You, you kind of know a lot of different guys and meet a lot of different guys. So it just becomes, it becomes like a phone tag game like hey i need a week one you'd be a, a, a good game for us are you open and you just kind of work through it that way um if that doesn't work then a lot of schools will post things on the ohsaa website uh there's some different um ohio scheduler on uh twitter um we'll have everybody send their open dates on there and you can kind of navigate through that or they'll actually contact you hey coach so and so is looking for a week two do you need anything so it just kind of works itself out that way but i i ultimately um have a say and uh, control of the non-conference games. Um, and that's worked out pretty well for us. Uh, and we try to do things um, the right way, treat everybody with respect and, you know, whether it's win or lose. And we try to be open and honest, say, hey, this is the type of team we think we're going to have this year. You know, we don't want to sandbag and then blow somebody out by 50 and set them up for failure um, or, or do the opposite. Say we're going to be really good and, and we, we're going to stink that year. And now somebody that's really looking for a, a, a tune-up for the playoffs didn't get what they were looking. So we try to be open and honest about where we're at with our evaluations. Um, and I think that's important um, because some guys, you know, they'll tell you, oh, we're going to be down. It'll be a good game. And then you play them and they got 61 guys. And you're like, wait, wait a minute. This isn't what you told me you were going to be. Um, and then conference-wise, I mean, our conference is loaded. I, 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 we're, we're very, I mean, Chardon, who's just won two state titles. Kenston just won a state title recently. So we have three state titles in the last, I think it's five, six years um, in our conference. Uh, Mayfield High School, who is a, 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 a perennial playoff team year in and year out. Uh, Riverside, who's had the, probably the best two seasons in school history the last two years. They made the Division II playoffs and advanced pretty far. And then uh, Willoughby South, who had a ton of success uh, not too long ago. They went three years in a row undefeated in the, the previous conference in the pack. You know, and they produced Kareem Hunt. Um, you know, I'm sure most of your listeners are familiar with him with the Cleveland Browns. And, and then us. Um, so the conference is a, a very tough conference. Um, like I said, you know, you got some state champs in there. And then region-wise, uh, just a few years ago, I was voted one of the top regions in the nation. Um, we have Akron, Hoban, Maslin. So we're D2, Region 5, and it is a grinder of a region uh, playoff wise. Hudson, um, just to name a few, but it's uh, it's tough. You're looking at Hoban and Maslin as the top two in that, com- in that region, just the region alone. Um, and they've probably been in and won outside of Pluto Central Catholic, who won Division Three last year. Uh, they've probably won or been in the last five or six state title games just from our region. So it's one tough. of my one of my old um, college teammates is the head coach at Austin Town Fitch, TJ Parker. Yeah. So I know TJ's 
you know, in that same region, I know you got Warren Harding in there, um, yes. you know, Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, you know, you, you just have a brutal, brutal week in and week out schedule uh, of teams, especially when, you know, that 16 team playoff uh, really those 12 through 16 <laughs> seeds can have a, have a rough, rough go in that. In that, that week going to be rough. And we've been there we were a few years ago. We got in as a 16 and we got Hoban and uh, we, we got out there and I tell you what, it was uh, 14, nothing going into half. And, you know, we were telling, Hey guys, like let's, and we, we, we weren't a Hoban team at that time. Uh, you know, everybody's expecting us to lose a hundred to nothing. Second half, the wheels kind of fell off and they took it to us, but um, you know, 14, nothing at halftime on the road to Hoban for our little guys from East. Like, um, you know, it was pretty exciting for a half. Yeah, for sure. You get you say you just hang hang in there, and you know eventually, I think we all can say as coaches, you know, the the depth will wear you out, and the skill will just eventually, uh, yeah, you know, you take over. I, one thing I used to tell people when I when I coached is, you know, you can you can scheme it up all you want, but the bottom line is you got to have the guys because if yeah. you don't got the guys, it doesn't matter. If Vince Lombardi was reincarnated. You yep. just don't got the guys, and yeah. that's what really makes a coach good is having the guys yeah a good coach can make guys better but you still got to have good guys to be right good. yeah if my x's are bigger and faster than your o's my x's are probably going to win no matter what you do with your o's <laughs> right especially at you know at this high school level um yep. so i think people have a very hard time thinking that especially like people that are on like the social media and you watch the nfl and all that stuff and it's not like that it's just you have to have the guys yep. to win at the high school, you know, the high school level in, in that regard. So um, how do you think you guys are going to look this upcoming 2024 season? We're, we're going to be small. We, we have a we have like, uh, our numbers will be good. Um, our numbers are, are pretty, pretty consistent. We're in that 60, 65 range, 10 through 12. Uh, we'll have about 25 freshmen, uh, but physically we'll be on the smaller side. Uh, but I tell you what, they're, they're, they're gutsy. They're tough. They want to whack you. Um, you know, we've got to, we've got to do well in the first five before we get to conference to, to have a shot at anything. Uh, but those are things that we don't honestly really think about or talk about too much. This, this stage of the game uh, right now, we want to focus on our, our quality of practices and all the coaching buzzwords, but we really believe it quality over quantity and just get better doing what we do. Not even worry about opponents. Our practices in the summer are just, North versus North. We don't run scouts. We don't script things. It's just our offense, our defense, and that's all we care about. That's all we focus on, getting better, doing what we do. Um, but we'll be gutsy. It's going to be an interesting thing. We've got some position battles. Um, I think we'll be a little bit stronger at the running back position on the offensive side of the ball, and our strength will probably be in our linebacker core on the defensive side of the ball um, going into it right now because of who we have coming back. And then uh, the rest is going to be kind of um, up for grabs. Uh, we lose almost everybody on the offensive side, our quarterback, our running back, some of our line guys, our top receivers, our tight ends. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting what we end up with. But we'll be on the smaller side, but they're tough physical kids. Gotcha. Now, do you guys have a freshman football team? Yes. Okay. Now, I know that's a that's kind of a rare thing to find in some places is, is that freshman football team um do you do you struggle finding like eight or nine games for those guys or with the bigger schools up here in cleveland is a little bit easier yeah it's 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 not too bad our conference some schools just combine their freshmen in jv um, okay so sometimes we might lose a freshman game because of that but we can pick up a game pretty easily um, there's enough schools around here uh that we're able to pick them up locally for the most part there's been a few times where we might have played like a san ignatius or somebody west side, or maybe a little bit further south. Uh, we, I know we played Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary one year with our freshman team, so they came up to play our freshman, which is only about 45 minutes away. Uh, but traditionally, we can find some people within half hour or so uh, near us. Or we even, um, last year, I think our JVs played Madison twice. So gotcha. we both just have an opening. Uh, we have a great relationship. They used to be in our conference. So like, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's play them twice. Uh, just to get the kids a game. We want to make sure every level gets 10 games. Um, I, if we have to play somebody three times, we'll play them three times to get the kids the games. You know, it's not like basketball and baseball where you have all these different games. You can pick up all these opponents. You know, we're limited. If we miss a week, that's a tenth of our season. You know, and sure. the kids practice all year round, the lifting, the running. They want to play games. Yeah, no, for sure. And 
not being from here originally, being from Pennsylvania and some other parts of Ohio, West Virginia, you don't really find a lot of places have those freshman teams anymore. You know, schools get smaller. It's pretty hard. You could bring up the mm-hmm. numbers, you know, to be on the varsity. So the few teams that I do know that had J, I'm sorry, freshman teams, they were traveling all over the place. Erie, Pittsburgh, Youngstown, oh, wow. you know, just to get six, seven eight games because just not everyone had a couple times they came up you know this way so i'm always curious when people say they have freshman football do they struggle to find that but i guess the bigger the area (laughs) the more choices yeah and it's pretty packed in here you know i mean you you can every 15 minutes you're hitting the high school you know we can go all the way out towards pa and then you know you got the ashville county it's a little bit more spread out but um you know we can go east or west for for a good half hour or so and run into a whole lot of schools no, that's that's definitely good. That that's a good thing to have the good yes. quantity over quality yes. in, in yep. that sense. So, um, one thing I want to talk about now is as we're kind of winding up the show here is we talked about it earlier. Um, you know the fitness part of it. So you said you enjoy working out. You know you're you're 51 years old, so uh, it's a little bit different training as a 51 year old than a than an 18 year old. So can you kind of talk about like what your fitness regimen is to keep yourself in shape and you know prevent injuries and not get injured you know, lifting as we all get older, because it does happen to us. So. Oh, ego, brother. <laughs> ego. I've got these yeah. high school kids that, uh, you know, they're in there moving weight and I'm looking and looking. I'm like, I-, I don't want these guys catching me. And then my son who works out like crazy all the time, he's on the staff and he's all buff and jacked at 24. And, you know, I keep looking, I'm like, ah, I-, I don't want him catching me yet. So that's a big part of it. Um, if I'm just going to be blatantly honest, Uh, You know, being around younger guys and stuff that that are crushing weights motivates me. Um, You know, that's a way for me to be competitive versus them, um, but also be competitive myself. I'm a very competitive person, as I'm sure you are from playing and coaching. Um, You know, I've got to find a way to do something competitive. I don't play softball or flag football or gave all that up in my early 20s. Something had to go to coach and have kids. So um, I don't golf. Um, So it's a way for me to be competitive. Um, but for me, it works to get up early. I get to the gym about 5.30 in the morning, uh, leave around 6.45, 7 in the morning so I can get home, shower, get to school. Um, if I do it after football and stuff, I'm just too tired. I'm just mentally exhausted at that point. Um, but I still do uh, all the heavy lifts, all your basic, you know, your bench, your shoulder press, and um, uh, push-pull leg is pretty much my split uh, that I do. And I try to get 20 minutes of walking on an incline, uh, for some cardio. I'm not a runner. Nobody wants to see or hear that pounding on the treadmill. Um, it would look ugly and sound even worse. Uh, so I, I don't really do a lot of that. Although my daughter's trying to get me on a 5k, uh, like the first weekend in June. And I asked her like two days ago and she hasn't told me she's signing up or not. So if I got to go run this 5k, I haven't ran in about 20 years. This is going to be uh, interesting, but there's a winery at the end. So she said we can hit that afterwards. That, that could be a good, like, uh, you know, like pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. You know, sure. you could use it. You can use it to train and then run in the Willoughby 5K, you know, later on this well, year for yourself. People will <laughs> know me at that one. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I can go down my tent and, and go do that. Nobody will know me down there. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's funny. You know, I think the the one thing I've learned as I've gotten older with the, with the lifting and the running is, you know, as a former player and coach, right? You get injuries, you get bumps and bruises. I, I can't do things like I can't barbell squat anymore. You know, yeah, I, I, can't, I avoid that, you know, so I've catered to like doing sumo squats with, um, you know, with dumbbells or, um, you know, doing body squats in that regard, doing a lot of leg press, things like that, just cause I, yeah. I can't put the pressure on my back. Yeah. You know, I can't, can't really run anymore. I can't sprint anymore, <laughs> you know, just gotta you know, walk on the treadmill or, or do the bike. Um, yeah. so So I definitely do get it. But coach, as we're winding the episode down here, we do have a special segment on the show called the Fast Fitty Five. And we came up with this a couple years ago. And it's five random questions that I come up with for all of our guests. So they really have nothing to do with the show, um, but they're a fun way to end the show. So um, you don't have to elaborate if you don't want to, but it's completely up to you. So if you're ready, we can get started. Let's do it. Okay. Question number one. What are your thoughts as people having rabbits for pets? Thumbs down. I don't even know why you'd even have it. It doesn't serve a purpose. You can't get eggs from it. You know, you're not going to cook it or raise it for food. Can't take it for a walk. Yeah, I don't see a point in it. 
Okay. All right. Better actor. And this is this is good. It's coming from you being from the from the 80s and the 90s. Arnold Schwarzenegger or Sylvester Stallone? Oof. I got to go Stallone. I mean, Rocky, Rambo. I mean, those were staples as a kid. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, Conan was awesome. I got to go Sly. I mean, it's it's a tough one. They've done some. Uh, they've done some some great movies together. Yeah, on a complete side. Uh, on a complete side note, though, the one thing I do want to bring up because especially because you like lifting when Schwarzenegger did Conan, and I forget what Conan it was. Maybe Conan the Barbarian. Um, when Will Chamberlain was in that movie, and also um, Andre the Giant was in that movie. Schwarzenegger said, and for as strong as Schwarzenegger was, he said those two were the strongest human beings he's ever, ever encountered, and Andre the Giant and Will Chamberlain. He said Will Chamberlain was probably stronger than Andre the Giant. He said he was just the strongest human being he's ever, ever encountered. So if you get a chance to look back at like that and Schwarzenegger and talking about working out with those guys do yeah. so, you may, you may find some enjoyment. That's in a great that. fact. Never knew that one. Yeah. So number three, better grocery store, Mark's or Aldi's? Oof, uh, I, I use Aldi's more, but my first job was Mark's. It used to be called Jotes back then or Jody's. I don't even remember. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, mean, I got to go Aldi's because it's right by my school, and that's where I go for okay. convenience. I, I couldn't even tell you the difference, but it's closer, so I go there. So Aldi's. Fair, fair, fair enough. Number four, what is harder to do, win the World Series of Poker or win the World Series of Chess? <sighs> uh, I would say Chess because, it, it, yeah, yeah, I would have to go Chess. I think so ch- too. Chess is very, very difficult. I mean, you have to be it. <laughs> very yeah, I strategic. No I, play chess, I have no idea. I play checkers. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I don't play chess either. I'll play. I'll play a mean game of checkers. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> give me the king and all that. I, I don't know. Chess. <laughs> all right. Last question: Are soccer players more athletic than hockey players? Athletic. I'd have to say no, only for, and I respect both, um, only because, I mean, you're on that thin little blade, so I'd have to go, and they're changing direction at a fast rate of speed. Um, I'd have to go hockey, uh, only only because of the the blade. If you put them both on grass, I have no idea, but I I, got to pick somebody, so I'll, I'll go hockey. Okay. Well, that was the Fast 55, and that's just something like we'd like to do to to end the shows with. But before we let you go, Coach, um, we don't want to say thank you for being on again. You know, we really appreciate it. We wish you the best of luck and East Lake North a great season ahead. And we give every guest about a minute if they want it. If there's anything you want to promote, whether it's the team um, or just send a good message out there to all of our listeners, we'll give you about a minute if you want. And the floor is yours. Yeah, no, just thanks for having us. I appreciate the the publicity um, for myself, but more importantly, the school, um, you know, and our Ranger guys. And uh mentioned Nick Tomba a few times, but he has Tomba's dry rub. Uh, Coach's dry rub is what it's called. So uh, I'll, I'll pump up uh, Coach Tomba's uh, side business with his catering and that. But Coach's dry rub, I use it. I honestly use it on all my stuff. I eat chicken every day and Coach's dry rub's on it. So um, it's something I use personally. So support him. <laughs> It, it is great for everybody. Yeah, definitely check out Coach's Dry Rub. Uh, Nick is a great guy. I actually got Dry Rub downstairs. We use it all the time for dinner. So I got to ask, though, Coach, before we go, what is your favorite Dry Rub that he has? Oh, boy, now you're going to put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's like a Cajun one. I honestly don't remember the name of it, to be honest with you. I've got it sitting I, uh, 15 feet away, too. I honestly don't know the name of it. I have I, a I would one. Okay, I was gonna say you got. I would recommend to have all of them. We have the um, we have the steak and pork chop one. We have the all American, and we have like the honey, the honey barbecue. So honey barbecue is one I use a lot. Love the honey barbecue. You put yep. something like that on chicken, get a side of ranch. It's like eating. It's like eating honey barbecue wings. Yep, that's my Sunday meal prep. But for my lunches, <laughs> the chicken breast with his dry rub, and that's it. So it was a great way to end the show, plug in, plug in Nick Tomba. But yeah. thanks again, Coach. We really appreciate you being on. As always, if you like the show, be a friend and tell a friend. If you didn't, tell them anyway, because I'm gonna I bet they like it just because you didn't. This is Fiddy signing off, and we'll see you next week. The Rod Helm Rands podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. 
energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also, no jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par, but this is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.